This is the Vendée Globe. It's the toughest sailing race in the world. We're talking about a journey of almost 45,000 kilometers, starting and ending off the west coast of France. It's a non-stop, unassisted, solo sailing race around the world. It can take anywhere from 70 to 130 days to complete, and many fail to finish at all. It's an incredible feat of self-reliance and perseverance. Some people even call it the Everest of sailing races, and it's got a reputation for being brutal thanks to not just the unforgiving conditions of the ocean, but also for the psychological toll of being completely alone for months at a time. And this is Pip Hare, one of only 10 women who have ever finished the Vendée Globe. She finished in 19th place in 2020 and is already looking to qualify for the race in 2024. And like so many other skippers who have completed the race, Pip is incredibly good at tackling difficult challenges solo. In fact, Pip thrives on it. Solo sailing gives me a chance to be a person I could never be on the land. It, it challenges me in every single way. And I love the person that I am when I'm solo sailing and I wanna be that person over and over again. Which led me to wonder why. What is it about some people that makes them thrive in extreme situations of isolation? And is there anything from an evolutionary perspective that equips us as humans to be self-reliant? So first off, there's a difference between simply being alone, which is a physical state, and feeling lonely, which is an emotional state where you feel disconnected from people. Like, have you ever felt alone, even in a crowded room? That's what I'm talking about here. But even though it is an emotional state, severe loneliness has been linked with real physical effects, like increased risks of dementia, heart disease, and stroke. Even though Pip had contact with the outside world throughout her race, being able to call her team whenever she needed to, there's a lot we can learn from Pip Hare's incredible self-reliance and her desire for tackling challenges alone during the Vendée Globe. It's the toughest thing I've ever done in my life. There's so many things that are hard about this race. I was dealing with anxiety for probably the whole of the Southern Ocean because you are thousands of miles from any help. And I was walking this knife edge all the time. It was a real opportunity to prove to myself who I am. Okay, so I did a bit of research on this and found that differences in how people regulate their emotions might explain why some people are able to be more resilient alone than others are. And it turns out that people who thrive alone have a few things in common. They practice something called cognitive reappraisal, where they give positive meaning to a stressful or upsetting event. They also don't blame themselves or others for unpleasant experiences. They avoid getting fixated on the negative parts of a situation, and they actively express their emotions instead of hiding them. And Pip put these kinds of coping strategies to use when the rudder on her boat broke just as she passed through Point Nemo, which is one of the most remote places on Earth where the astronauts on the International Space Station are sometimes the closest humans. I did have a few hours where I was very tearful, I was very emotional, but I couldn't change it. I couldn't change anything that had happened, but I could change what happened in the future. So I just had to pack up all of that emotion and just focus on making this rudder change work, giving everything that I had over to just getting out of this situation and getting back on the racetrack and not giving the emotion any more time because it's so counterproductive and it just wasn't going to help me. And if you were wondering if this is something that you can learn, well, you're in luck. It's possible to learn these kinds of emotional strategies through practice. Pip is an incredible example of the idea of training your mind like you train your body. She had experience dealing with being alone in the past and that prepared her for this longer stretch and the things that came with it. Psychologists have found that people who choose solitude intentionally gain real benefits. They feel like they have more control over their time and they develop better cognitive and emotional skills to deal with their loneliness. I think one of the reasons why I am maybe more emotionally resilient than others is because I've been active racing solo since 2009 and I've never had the budget for satcoms so I've never had telephones on the boat ever so I'm used to being completely on my own 
So this is how Pip deals with being out on the ocean on her own for months at a time. And a lot of these strategies have been proven to apply as well to the kind of self-reliance and moments of loneliness that we all deal with in everyday life, even when surrounded by people. But this makes me want to know the answer to something else. Humans are social creatures, so I want to know where does evolution come into this? Are we specially equipped to do this kind of insane, thrive under pressure solo situation that Pip loves? Or does it go against all of our natural instincts? Well, what I found was that the pain that we feel in loneliness might have evolved simply as a way to remind us to reconnect with others. Because for our ancestors, social structures meant better odds in long-term survival. Like if you wandered away from the group in a hunter-gatherer society, you were more likely to get eaten by a predator or just get lost. So staying connected was just better. And being part of a group also allowed humans to spread out personal responsibility, lighten the load of things like raising children, and just made it more likely that you'd be able to pass on your DNA. And on top of all of that, it's even thought to play a role in a healthier immune system. But even though all of that is true, there's also a genetic component that could have made some people evolve to just be better at dealing with loneliness. Scientists have found 15 genetic variations that are linked with susceptibility to loneliness. And this variety might have been good for a community. It might mean that some people would be so driven by a fear of becoming disconnected from their community that they would fight really hard to protect it. But then others who might not feel loneliness so strongly would have the bravery to venture out on their own and discover new things, while still having that little urge to return and share what they found with others. So Pip's ability to leave people on land and tackle the ocean on her own may be at least a little bit written in her DNA. If you're a solo sailor, you 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 have to rely on yourself, and and that's you know part of why I love the sport is because I have to own my failure as well as my success. You know, I have to own my mistakes. I have to take responsibility for everything. So humans are naturally not good at dealing with loneliness. We're just not built to be alone. But at the same time, it looks like some people are just inherently better at dealing with loneliness than others are but this is something that all of us can improve on as well. And the Vendée Globe is such an incredible example of just how much humans can accomplish when they push themselves and what they can accomplish completely solo. It's a race that demands constant presence and attention, and that's one of the things that I admire the most about Pip. Pip took on the challenges of the race, regulated her emotions, and was able to belong in the moment, even in complete solitude. And I think this is something that we can all learn from. Being a human being colliding with the natural elements is a beautiful thing. It is invigorating. It kind of just restores some sort of sense of balance. Pip is already preparing for her next Vendée Globe in 2024, and I've got no doubt that her time in this recent race has prepared her even more to face the time alone at sea. Without a doubt, it was the best three months of my life. It feels already such a long time ago, and I just want to go back there. I want to do it again. I want to feel like that again.